Chris from EnergyPup.com and we are looking at Future the DT Ultra on the PS4. This is going to get loud at some point, so hopefully in my next game audio case it will be doing for this game because it's only doing what I keep on getting from my phone. Um, so yeah, this is weird, it just came out today, um, or yes. Today or tomorrow, depends where you are. I know being in Japan, it always sets up real time. Um, but it's just coming out on PSN, uh, PS4, and the Vita Cross 5, but not Cross Save. Um, which is why I've been playing most of it this afternoon on Vita, so you know, I've unlocked more than what's on display here. It's really weird the way it does that because on the leaderboards, it only has one set of leaderboards. Um, so it's showing that I have you know, one and a half thousand which should unlock a lot more. Uh, that's how good I am, I'm pretty good at this game. 17 out of five, so probably not very many, but more than 17. Um, so that's cool. Um, I'm probably a little bit better than it, at this than I am at, at most games, which I'm good at, because I've played quite a bit of Futuridium. Uh, Futuridium EP, that is. Um, whoop, went back with that. Uh, because Futuridium EP was a PC game, and then after that, it was it came out on iPhone. And I played an awful lot of the iPhone version, and really quite liked it, and my only was criticism of the iPhone version was, um, oh wow, I, I really wish I could play this with buttons on my d Now I can play it with buttons on my d and it looks pretty good, but I can do stuff in it. Um, and now I wish to do that level there, so I've played this a ton today, just restarting that into the level, that first level, so I get a good start on my game, which is very important. Uh, one thing that's new with this version of the game is that you get medals at the end of each stage. Um, and in fact, this whole first campaign is, is a little tweaked, a little bit different than how the original version was. Um, so you get a medal at the end of each stage, or up to three, uh, for being it within a certain time, um, for not dying on the stage, and most importantly for chaining everything together. You, it's, there's a weird thing with this, is that um, it's kind of a little bit of a puzzle game in a way, because even though it's a shoot up, what you really want to figure out is the most... It's the most efficient way uh, to beat every Dreadnought. Now, play the Dreadnought thing, yes. This is very much based on the name kind of suggestion uh, on Euridium, which was in the Great Britain, I think, on C-24. Um, and it was all about flying over these big ships and, and shooting all the defenses on it. And then uh, that would expose the ship's core. You got the ship's core and you go right on, on to the next one. And that's what this does. But it's very much a high score game. And the real trick with it is you know, the trick to getting a good score is boosting your multiplier. You boost your multiplier by not dying, obviously, but also uh, by doing these levels really, really quickly and really efficiently. So there's a real, the real challenge with this game is thinking about and playing and replaying when I screwed up my chain there because I didn't boost. Because uh, that's not even a used game. But, uh, what was I saying? Oh, I saw it. Oh, no, I got the last bit. No medals for you. Um, yeah, so it's all about playing and replaying and memorizing level layouts and then going, ah, right. You know, it's not necessarily that the levels are difficult in early doors here, although the levels do get fearsome in early doors. Um, it's not the inherent difficulty within like the, the game. It's that um, you have to figure out the most efficient path 
do the same. This is not my signature part in the game, and you can hear the little boom coming from the corner, which says, Surviving. So you see in the top right you've got uh, an energy bar. I can die as much as I want in this game. This is a bonus stage, so the energy is really, really low. Um, you can die as much as you want in this game, but when you die your energy will deplete faster. And your energy is always, 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 always depleting. Um, these bonus stages are much harder than a PS4 controller. Weird, I could always do this really really easily with the future of the analog stick. I was doing this fine with one point. The tightness of the uh, PS4 analog stick makes it really good for accurate shooting and really bad for um, moving fast. Um, yes! Um, ah, right, yeah, that was it. The energy thing. So the energy is always depleting, and if you die, uh, the energy will deplete more. Um, and if you shoot a cube, then it will deplete slower. So you have to keep on shooting stuff all the time. So if you're not doing a particularly good go in terms of your efficiency and efficiency, um, then you're you're basically your doom, uh, really. Well, you are in old school future. This is like the uh, ultra mode, which is the new uh, kind of campaign uh, that's in this that's in future, in ultra. Um, and the levels are a little bit different, but more of them uh, you can boost, as I mentioned before, to move quicker. And it's a little bit softer because it's topping up your energy at the end of the next stage. Uh, whereas in classic, future um, in the original version, it didn't top your energy up from stage to stage. So basically, one really efficient, really inefficient stage uh, will screw your whole game up. Whereas here, uh, it's you not know, One thing I always really liked about uh, the game, the original game, and I really like about Ultra as well, is that it looks. Oh, at least you get a good um, uh, This game looks really good. It looks really good in a retro future sense. It looks really good in a game that runs it. Um, but 
but yeah, when things get on the edge of the screen, it kind of walks in like this awesome sort of red green, uh, polarized 3D, uh, green specs. 3D specs that used to go on the front of uh, magazines and stuff. Um, and the other thing is, shit, please, this shit. Leaves this trail. I hate this stage. I hate this stage. I have been able to use it. That's an answer to continue. You know, I've had to use a couple of credits on this stage. Uh, this is one of the new ones, and it just gets mental. The boxes, the walls, the walls. They close in. I'm not going to do it. And I only have one credit. So the thing with continuing, as I said earlier on, is... Ah, shit. There you go. No credit. Sorry. That was an awful score. The, the, the reason for the awful score is that... And that's not my best score again on my Vita. I got like 2.8 million you saw at the start. I'm pretty sure. Um, the reason why it's an awful score is that in this, right, if you die, but if you continue, it instantly halves your score uh, from that you know, from that point. So um, that's cool, I think, in, in a way, because um, you know it, it sets this. It's just, just everything like this, you games like this, you just get so involved with, with watches and it kind of, it teases you there when you screw up, um, you know, it kind of goes, hey, you can continue, but you won't be able to bank that score, but don't Oh no, I just went underneath, ah. Oh, let's start again. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, if you die, it's like, oh, hey, you can continue at the cost of half the score. And the reason why I think that's really cool is that when you get really invested in score chasing games, um, it's kind of like, oh, I died once. You know, because if you die uh, as well, then you lose your multiplier and basically You know, all of that business, and that's not good at all. Free. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's so tempting when you're invested in score chasing to just go, oh, I screwed up, right, we start, right, we start. Um, but here, the game's basically saying, well, we're, we're going to take away half your score, but. Um, give you the right to progress. So like there's this there's this battle in your head between oh right, uh, I can play for high score, but if I screw up, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna switch the velocity and start playing for progression at this point. Um, and I think that's that's really cool because it kind of means in many a way, like when I die in this, that's the first time that I die. Uh, and that when I start using cases, having to use the continue, I'm not doing the most efficient or perfect run of the game. I can still think, oh well, okay, I'll play, I'll play for the direction this time. You know, I'll play to the direction of the game. Uh, you know, stage that I've got to do before. And there's a lot of stages now with the, the new stage that I've got to do. So there's, there's a lot of extra stuff there. I mean, you could kind of say, well, hey, this was on PC and on mobile for a lot cheaper uh, than this one, but uh, this is oh, fuck something, um, by the way. So, uh, and technically, uh, and, 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 uh,
I mean, you can't. I'm racing as hard as I can back on the stick there, and you can't make the gap from 5 to 6 on a dual shot 4. Um, um, but yeah, so it's one of those weird things. You do, um, it's like you, games that are cross like you do PS4 and these are just like you, or I do the thing. Well, I played Vita mainly just for these. Yeah, I mean, you could say you could argue that uh, it's, a, it's in terms of what you get for the extra cost, there might be a value proposition issues there. Um, I don't think so, actually. I think it's more of a case of um, the iPhone version being with this, uh, you know, it's the old chestnut of the iOS racing to the bottom. There's certainly tons of extra stuff in here. It does make it like this. So, yeah. Really like Ancient Tradium EP Ultra. It's out on PSN right now. Uh, so, it's not too expensive. And it's the same. Check it out. I don't know where this thing's going to get in here. Yeah, I might just quick out while the going's good. Yeah, Chris Chubb, Thanks for watching.